Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I'm back again tonight with another Battleytics video for you, a deep dive analysis. Uh, this one was voted on by our patrons, uh, but I think everybody has asked for this in the comments at some point. Tonight we're looking at the Marauder 2C. Uh, this thing is, it's broken. I have no other no other words. Uh, it is just a disgustingly powerful, uh, I hate the person across the table for me type of mech. Uh, it is a Wave 2 redesign and it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I believe it popped up in the 3055 um, TRO. And I think that TRO had those crazy full color, they were like green and blue uh, artwork. Uh, for all of the the 2C mechs, it had like the Jenner, the Marauder, you know, a whole bunch of them in there. Um, and that artwork, uh, I think, served as inspiration for the new model, which, by the way, looks absolutely phenomenal, uh, if I didn't say it already. Uh, but let's talk about the mech. Three clan ER PPCs. I don't need to say anything else. Uh, and it's only 2,680 battle value. I don't know. How is that possible? It seems unfair. I must have checked that like 15 different times in multiple sources. Sarna, Mega Mac, so forth. I mean, it's it seems crazy and expensive when you think that a Shadow Cat M, which only has a couple of, you know, clan large pulse, is only a couple hundred battle value less. Uh, I'm expecting big things from the Marauder 2C, but Battleytics has been known uh, to break some hearts. So why don't we dive in? We'll check out the numbers. We'll see what it says. So guys, stay tuned. Marauder 2C is coming right up. All right, so here we are, technical overview of the glory that is the Marauder 2C. Uh, so this is just the standard one that we're looking at. You know, th this is not an Omni mech, right? The the 2C variants are, you know, second line mechs and they, you know, basically have designations like standard 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have Marauder 2C3, Marauder 2, this is just the standard one. All right, so this puppy's 85 tons, guys. So this was um, basically in 2828, Clan engineers were like, we need to make the Marauder even better. Um, so they're like, let's add 10 tons to it. Why not? Now it's an assault mech. Um, it is, uh, it, it's absolutely brutal. Um, movement profile, though, has not changed. It's 4.6. Uh, it has 42, um, basically 21 double heat sinks. So heat dissipation of 42. That's insane. Um, it has a standard fusion engine. Do you know how much I love that? It's so exciting. Uh, again, another thing that I looked up a couple different ways, but uh, it does have, in fact, a standard fusion engine. Um, it's got a uh, good old-fashioned gyro, good old-fashioned cockpit, but it's got all the good stuff, endosteel, ferrofibrous. Speaking of armor, 11.5 tons. Interestingly, that's the same amount of armor um, on a standard inner sphere Marauder, um, Succession Wars era, like a 3R, um, but obviously a lot more pips here because we're talking about clan ferro fiber. So 220 pips clocks in at 83.7% armor coverage. Um, so how's it look? It looks pretty good. CT is a little bit light, but, um, you know, everything else looks, looks solid. Um, you know, the, the, the inner sphere marauder, right? The three R's and whatnot. They're notorious for having weak side torsos. Obviously the clan engineers decided to fix that problem here. Um, no hand actuators, and then onto the weapons, three ER PPCs, two medium pulse lasers, and then four ER small lasers uh, for close support. Um, I'm not a big fan of the ER small lasers, but you know, I guess they do something when when they're when they're clan. You have a little bit more opportunity than than the standard inner sphere variety. But um, thing persists all the way through. I mean, as you can imagine. If I were, if I had one of these things, I would never give it up. So even people in the 3100s agree that this thing is very useful, uh, and they continue to use it. It is fielded in a variety of different factions. Um, all right, so now onto the exciting part, um, the offense. But before I get there, I do want to note this thing has no equipment, no sensors, 
right? Obviously it doesn't have case. Well, I guess it would have case, but um, no, no ammo of any kind, right? Um, you know, nothing, no AMS. It's just energy weapons all day. Very much like the Flashman we looked at, although I have a feeling this thing is going to outperform uh, in terms of the damage. So let's dive in. Here it is, the offensive benchmarks. Uh, the charts are, are brimming uh, with, uh, with, with just colors here. There's just so much going on. Um, there's just so much damage to be done. So let's take a look first at the red line chart. So the, the baseline damage is crazy to begin with. Um, the baseline is 333.4 points of damage. And you can see the area representing the damage done um, over time. Uh, turn over turn there. Uh, and the yellow line represents the heat that is generated uh, basically on the on every you know the, every time you're firing and that's alpha strike heat. Um, it's trying to keep the thing under 30 points of heat uh, but it's basically running it as hot as humanly possible. When you do that over 12 turns it builds up 256 points of heat uh, and it uh, <laughs> Basically, it, uh, it, it does 153.6 points of damage. So basically slashing your damage by more than 50%. Um, so obviously not a good idea to just, you know, hold down the trigger on this thing. Um, there is a little bit of finesse to be done um, with the firing. Not a whole lot. You can optimize it. You can gain about 3.7%. Um, if you optimize the damage, you get it up to 345.7 points of damage. So... That's a disgusting amount of damage <clears throat> coming out of an 85 ton mech. It's, it's crazy. That is more than, you know, three flashmen, uh, you know, worth of damage in, in a single mech. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's pretty crazy. So lethality index, well, maybe it's like three trebuchets. Maybe I'm underselling the flashman. It's definitely three trebuchets. Um, <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about the lethality index. So this little javelin's running around. Uh, this massive Marauder 2C is trying to blow it out of the water. Uh, it, it takes 6.22 turns on average for this Marauder to take this thing down. Um, it's basically doing a very good job. It's not generating a lot of crits. Uh, however, look at the damage per hit at 11.8. That's, that's terrifying. Um, I don't think the Javelin ever really gets an ER small laser range, but if it did... Those four ER small lasers, guys, clans, they do five points a pop, and they can hit at six hexes. You know, Inner Sphere does three, and I think they hit the four hexes. This is the difference with clan weaponry. Like, even their small lasers are actually useful. Um, you know, they're basically almost as good as an IS medium minus, a, you know, a few hexes of range. That's pretty impressive. So, I mean, if you fire all of those small lasers, I mean, you're, it's a 20-point shot. That's pretty terrifying. So, anyway... Damage-wise, this thing is gross. I do want to go to Battleletics.com. There's a couple of other standout clan mechs that I want to talk about. So the first one that comes to mind is the Warhawk. So the Warhawk, optimized, did 351.1 points of damage. This Marauder is at 345.7. The Warhawk is almost 3,200 battle value. Again, this thing is just under 2,700, right? Um... The other one is the Dire Wolf A, which is one of the top performing mechs we've ever analyzed. Um, that is, uh, t for whatever reason, 2,855 battle value. That thing does 489.5. However, the Marauder um, is, you know, noticeably faster, um, you know, so it's an interesting comparison there. The Dire Wolf A by the way, if you don't take that variant. In Classic, you like your friends too much. Um, the Marauder, I feel like, is going to be good too. So going back to the Marauder versus the Warhawk, it's kind of interesting. You've got a mech with four ER PPCs, but you've got this Marauder that costs less, has one less PPC, um, and does basically as much damage. That's pretty good. All right, so let's look at this defensive stuff here. Um, Armor looks pretty good. The CT is a little bit under average. So the yellow bar represents, you know, where we think the armor level should be based on the percent total coverage. So we said it had, what, 83.7% total coverage. So that yellow bar is roughly at 83% of the total CT available armor. 
Um, so it's a little bit under there. The, the side torso is a little bit over armored. The arms on par, legs a little under, rears a little over. Um, overall, I think it's fine. And that's reflected in the survivability, 90.9%. That's really good. So not 99%, 90.9%. That's great. That's in like top tier survivability. Um, you can see that most of the deaths, it, you have to work hard to kill this thing. It's a 2.2% engine deaths. Remember, it's a standard fusion engine. So you're working very hard to get those three critical hits and only 6.9% um, coring out the whole torso and on an 85 ton mech that's a lot of structure it's a lot of armor um, so pretty interesting there uh, mobility also doing very good so those um, those leg criticals are in fact packed out um, and I think it's with heat sinks let me just double check here uh, yeah it looks like it's heat sinks in there so again you know you hit one of the legs um, you know, there's a 33% chance you're going to hit something that's not a leg actuator. So it, it does a pretty good job of maintaining its mobility, which I think is important because you do want to get those ER smalls and the medium pulse and things like that into range. Um, other than that, not much else to say about the Marauder survivability. It's tough as nails. Um, very good. If we go back over to our two points of comparison, the Warhawk and the, um, and the Dire Wolf, um, so what do we have here? Survivability on the Warhawk was 90.4%. Um, on the Dire Wolf, it was 88.9%. So roughly, roughly the same. The Dire Wolf has 99% armor coverage. I am very interested to see the comparison of the Dire Wolf A's efficiency uh, and the Marauder 2C. So far, the Dire Wolf A is the reigning champion, but I think the Marauder will come close to unseating it. Um, so that's on the next screen here. So let's dive in and take a look at that. So the efficiency analysis, the long awaited, uh, how does this Marauder do? All right, so we talked about it, 90.9% survivability. That only leads to a damage loss of 3.6%. And that's because most of its damage is being done at range. Um, those medium pulse lasers, the smalls, they're, you know, the medium pulse are coming in at 12 inches. The smalls are coming in at six. Most of the damage has been done um, by the time this thing is getting close enough um, to finally die. So 8.88 on the efficiency. I was hoping for over 10, but such is life. Uh, I, you know, I'm surprised. So this thing, I think, does a, just gobs of damage. You know, again, uh, the battle value, it's priced right. So let's let's analyze why this thing wasn't higher. But before, let me footnote that and say 8.88 is bananas. And it's definitely a mech you should take as much as possible. Um, so let's look at the gunnery sensitivity. So the first thing I see is low gunnery sensitivity. Um, this thing goes up and then it sort of flattens out right after two. Um, there's very little return on investment. Um, and that's, you know, not atypical for clan mechs, you know, any mech really, uh, you know, once you get past two, the, the return on investment, especially the more expensive the mech gets, it's harder to, to, to get it. So to me, this is a guy I'm running at gunnery two, um, and you know, I'm doing as much damage as I can with those ER PPCs. I'll get those medium pulse into play. Um, not too concerned about the ER smalls at that point. I think, you know, when we, and we'll look at this on the next screen, you know, the threat, I think part of the challenge with this mech is the heat management. We saw it, you know, in the red line ACD, we saw what a hit it would take. And you can see like, as soon as the medium pulse lasers come into play, I mean, just firing all three ER PPCs, right, builds up heat. You can dissipate 42 with this mech. Um, but those PPCs build up 45. So just right out of the gate, default, you know, you can't deliver um, as much damage as, you know, as you might like. Now, it's not to say this isn't an amazing mech. It's still an amazing mech. But I think that's one of the contributing factors to, to what was holding this thing back from really uh, ascending to God status, um, you know, like the Dire Wolf A. Um but let's take a look at the threat assessment. We can we can analyze it a little bit further. 
um, and we can talk about how to play this mech on the tabletop. All right, so roll evaluation for the Marauder 2C. Um, I struggled a little bit here. There's one standout roll, that's Vanguard, right? You, this thing is like one of those zombie mechs, no ammo, all energy weapons. It's tough. It's got decent movement profile. Um, it survives, right? Just stick it in the middle, run it up the gut, pick somebody that's bigger than you, pick a fight with them. Uh, and this thing will, you know, will win most of the time. I think it's a really, really solid mech for that role. And it can attract a lot of fire um, and keep on keep on chugging, right? I mean, it can do a lot of, of damage. Um, the second role I think that's a near, that's a close second is, is a defender role. Um, to me, um, this is a great mech to camp on an objective. It has those ERPPCs, um, you know, 20, 21 inch range they have, right? So they can, they can reach out and they can, they can touch things, you know, and they can do 45 points of damage if you so desire. Now you do build up five points of heat, but again, you know, you can kind of alternate, you know, on, off, on, off, um, you know, something along those lines, um, Maybe it's not five points of heat, actually. What am I saying? Four points of heat. My math is, is not great right now. Um, but still, you know, you can basically um, do enough damage there that, um, you know, uh, 45, 30, 45, 30. I mean, you're going to chew things apart if you hit, obviously. Um, and then when they get closer, you've got two medium pulse and uh, 20 points of ER small laser damage. So uh, I think a defender roll is very good. Anyway, I'm sort of on a tangent. Brawler's the third role. That's a distant third. I went back and forth between fire support and brawler. I don't think it's a good fire support mech because, you know, you're taking a majority of its weapons off the table. Um, and I also think fire support mechs, to me, if I want to play something in a fire support mech, uh, in a fire support role, it's a mech that's typically more fragile, like a trebuchet, for example. Um, this thing is so tough, it's kind of hard not to say be a brawler, you know, get in, again, pick that fight. Um, I think you could play this thing in the city. You know, the ERPPCs don't have a minimum range. Yes, you're going to get hot pretty quick, but you can still do a substantial amount of damage. The alpha strike potential on this thing is 79 points. That's a lot. It's, it's, an, it's an insane amount of damage. Um, you'll build up 20 points of heat, but, you know, you can do it. And if you're within two inches... Uh, which is short range for those ER small lasers. Like if you're at optimal range for every single weapon, you're doing 85.8%. Um, that's your ACD cap, right? That's the closest you can get to that Alpha Strike Max, which is 67.8 points of damage. So again, you get into two inches, you roll all the dice and build up 20 points of heat. On average, you're going to do 67.8 points of damage. That's that's a large that's a large amount of damage. So. Overall, I love the Marauder 2C. Um, I, I, you know, I think the efficiency at 8.88 is really strong. It's definitely a mech that I would take. However, it has this. This analysis has prompted me uh, to flip over to Sarna.net, one of my favorite resources, um, and take a close look at all of the Marauder variants there. Um, you know, and it and then it lists all of them at a glance. And there is one I'm looking at now, the Marauder 2C10. Um, and this basically swaps two of the ERPPCs for clan large pulse lasers. Um, it costs about 200 more battle value, but I wonder how this thing would stack up um, against that Dire Wolf A. Now the Dire Wolf A, again, you know, the, 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 the efficiency was over 10. It was like north of 10. Um, but this thing has three clan large pulse and a clan gauss. It builds up no heat ever um, because it has, you know, it says the same number of heat sinks, 42, but those those large pulse, they're, you know, they're really, really good weapons. So it, it would be interesting, I think, to do an analysis at some point on that Marauder 2C10 variant. Um, I don't know. Um, the other thing I guess it does is uh, it has um, two small pulse lasers instead of two ER smalls, but I don't care. More interested in the big guns, guys. Uh, you know how I am. Size matters. So anyway, that's all I've got for the Marauder 2C. Interested to hear your thoughts, your love stories, your favorite configuration of the Marauder 2C. Um, I would absolutely field it 
in any configuration. I mean, the thing is just awesome looking and who doesn't love the Marauder? I know I know lots of people don't like the Marauder. I love the Marauder. Um, I do think though largely it is a fan favorite and the 2C, uh, just such a cool design. I have not painted mine yet. Um, I have, I think I have two of them. I think I bought two of those boxes, um, possibly three of them. But I, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I have one I think you're marked for either Ghost Bear or Hell's Horses. I'm not sure. Um, if I want to put one in an inner sphere faction for, you know, like for the ill clan type battles where, you know, salvage and things, you know, inner sphere forces get their hands on clan max. I don't know, guys. We'll see. We'll see. So that said, I'm wrapping up this analysis. Uh, subscribe if you have not done so already. There's a little, little box in the bottom corner there you can click on and subscribe. Um, if you want to get more involved in the channel, you can come on over to Patreon. We have a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar tier. Um, but yeah, one dollar is is all it takes to just get on uh, Patreon there and get in on the action. Um, other than that, Aries Games and Minis, guys, if you haven't checked it out uh, and you've been watching my channel, I, I'm for shame. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, but definitely check them out. Um, if you haven't given Aries a chance, definitely do it. Um, I just got a whole wad of crap from him um, that I ordered up uh, for our upcoming battle reports. So it's always exciting to get that stuff. I, I love, you know, new plastics. I love the old Ironwind uh, vehicles. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, they're just so cool. I bought a bunch of little, uh, little support trucks and things like that. They have some really neat stuff uh, and, and Ares has them all. So really cool stuff to spice up your tabletop. Uh, including hardware studio stuff uh, and some exclusives that only can be found at Aries Games and Minis. So check that out. Um, other than that, guys, that's all I've got to say. I hope you enjoyed this review on the Marauder 2C. This this is a big boy. Uh, this was this is one everybody's been asking for. Um, and you know what? Honestly, I think it turned out well. I was expecting a little bit more on the efficiency, but I'm, I'm hard to please. What can I say? Uh, like I said, guys, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. But other than that, Stay tuned. As you know, always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming, and have a great night.